Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 39 of Solar Civilization, and we are picking up where we left off with Sean Kerman, who is on the dark side of the moon, and must leave to get back to the moon base, or he will surely meet a cold, electric chargeless end. Because he is out of electric charge, and TAC Life Support gives you about three hours without electric charge before your kerbals are dead, before they freeze without the heaters and things, so he must get back to, um... But get back to the moon base, well not before nightfall, but before he runs out of electric charge, where, because at the moon base there is kind of all the electric charge you could ever hope for, I think he gets, can sustain about 40 kerbals through a long moon and night. Um, anyway, it's time to jump back, and I don't do this particularly efficiently, I burn too high, not really paying enough attention, um, and I should have probably just jumped kind of like halfway just to make sure I had enough fuel, but I didn't really think of that. And as it was pointed out to me in the last kind of the comments of the last video, and is should just be more obvious to me than I was thinking about it, is I should have gone much flatter with this trajectory. And I lost my UI there, so a quick quick save fixes that. I seem to be losing my UI a lot. But anyway, I have gone far too high and um, kind of used more fuel than I should have. Um, and I should really stop overshooting so much. I'm just being very fuel inefficient, and this isn't a very fuel... Well, it's got a lot of fuel, doesn't have a lot of... Well, delta V, I guess, would be the uh, measure of effectiveness of moving across the moon. Anyway, um, so after this kind of lack of efficiency, um, I'm running very low on fuel, and I don't think I have quite enough delta V, well, just enough delta V to slow down. But obviously, as I'm slowing down, I'm also accelerating, so I might be going a little fast when I touch down on the surface of the moon. So uh, let's hope I can slow down just enough to place the spacecraft down safely. Um, well, okay, that's not safe, but it's safe for the Kerbal. Sean is alive. Um, it appears I've smashed off a landing leg, broken another one, lost some science experiments, lost all my solar panels. Um, still got an engine and a fuel tank, and I'm trying to kind of flip it over here. Um, but it's not working so well. Uh, so yeah, this went poorly. Um, my kerbals are kind of, kind of stranded on the moon now. Um, that's fine, because I do need to use... Well, I have a couple of plans for vehicles to send to the moon. I want to send... Um, Two, well, two vehicles. One, just basically another one of these that I can, um... Actually, no, something without science. Just a small return vehicle that can ferry me to and from Earth. Well, Kerbin. And then, um... A, then just a vehicle that uses nuclear engines and has enough del Delta V to jump around the surface. Basically what I was going to use this for. But then it turned out this would be effective if the space was on Minmus, but it does not have enough fuel, um, for, you know, for the moon. So I'm going to replace kind of my scientific spacecraft with something better. And I'm gonna re just send a brand new, um, brand new return vehicle, and that'll all be wonderful. But for now, I'm just trying to write this so I can not have to send so many vehicles. But it's fine because these kerbals can be on the surface of the moon for a long time. They have a whole base. They have two habitation modules. They have all the electric charge they'll ever need. I think they have kind of about a year each of life support. Um, so yeah, they can be here a while. They can probably, you know, just well. Actually, these guys need to go off to Duna because this is my. Um, my kind of command crew training for Duna. So, yeah, they don't have... They have, like, 60 days, actually, then. But that's fine. No doubt I can get something out here in that time. Actually, I could probably launch a vehicle on my, um... On my, one of my SSTOs. That'll probably do fine. Anyway, I'm just going to quickly test this life support um, and see if this uh, actually transfers electric charge. And it appears that it doesn't really do it particularly well, even when I start pumping electric charge. So, I'm kind of worrying about the effectiveness of this electric charge transmitty thing but i don't think actually attack life support actually calculates electric charge while you're not on the spacecraft so yeah um we'll just uh we'll, we'll, we'll just well it would work in theory and it would work in practice so yeah it's fine um we little overlay there i think at the end of that video it had like a little free make overlay it it, it includes them because i use sometimes uh, because I was using a terrible format, so I had to use FreeMake Video Converter to convert that last bit of video to fit into Vegas. Um, so yeah, that's why there was a FreeMake logo there. Um, I should really put more effort into cutting those out. Um, but that won't be happening anymore because I'm using a different format. Anyway, it's time to hopefully... Well, I can't lose this lab now. I don't want the loss of Morpheus 5 to be in vain, you know. Um, so I'm going to make another dumb jump, but I am going to make it only halfway. Um, to this little patch of Keythane, so I can send the Keythane Miner after it. And I, of course, have, of course, warped into the day, so that, uh, so that, um, 
you know, I can have electric charge. And I'm just looking through the debug menu there, um, because I heard from Bob Fitch, who I learn about all my technical KSP things now. Um, I, I, I learned that when you're having a bad frame rate, kind of unexpectedly, it can often be because um, the game's throwing you a bunch of exceptions in the code. Um, so yeah, as you can see there, there was lots of warnings and ex exceptions and errors and things. So that's what that was. Basically, that's why my game seems to be running so badly, because this is a very old spacecraft, actually. So that's probably why it's running so badly with this. Um, you can even see it at four times time accelerate, um, which is just horrible. Uh, so I do need to fix that. Anyway, it lands hard, but it lands fine, and it does get down. So I can send the Keythane miner after this, and I am going to have to send some Kerbals as well to refuel it. But yeah, in principle, that works fine. Um, so we do have our lab nearer to our base, uh, but not at it. So yeah, as I said, we'll send this Keythane miner after it. Um, and then, well, we'll only send it after it when we have uh, enough, you know, when we have, when we have the ability to transfer Kerbals, because we need to connect it up with pipes. Um, but yeah, this needs to kind of convert its keythane into some fuel, um, and this is not in a keythane field right now, which kind of sucks. Um, but anyway, so I'm converting my keythane into liquid fuel and oxidizer. Liquid, uh, liquid fuel seems to generate much faster than oxidizer, so I have to kind of stagger it. Um, but yeah, and I'm getting a few more warnings here, but nothing major, so it's not running too terribly. Although it's not running great. Um, <clears throat> bit of a cough, but yeah, uh, uh KSP's been running a little rubbish for me, but, uh, nothing terrible. I did sell the quick... What the shit? Oh yeah, I accidentally loaded a quick save there. I was looking through some quick saves, and that was a very old quick save, so it broke. Anyway, I'm putting down a quick save here because I've been having some crashes, um, and I don't want my quick save to be in the air. Um, I want to be able to load from the ground just for simplicity. But anyway, I don't actually get a crash. Um, but occasionally, I like to put down an extra quick save. That's what that is. Um, in newer versions, if you click Alt F5 or Alt F9, you can load lots of different saves, which is nice. So I've just been doing that every now and again. To stop myself from losing data, as I have a couple of times. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> it's time to make the jump. Uh, again, doing not a particularly uh, good, you know, jump across the surface. I should really figure that out. But I have so much delta v, it doesn't matter with this spacecraft, and it regenerates delta v because it can mine fuel. Um, I feel like I had something else to say about that before I started talking about quicksing. Oh yeah, I, I did did leave that quick save in because it was actually from. Uh, a very old save back in the old shuttle days, as I could call it, um, with old B9 parts, so none of the parts loaded in, and something was glitched and flung into the atmosphere, as you could see. Um, I was actually trying to quick save, not quick load, but uh, yeah, that's what happens. Anyway, coming back to the base, you can see Morpheus 5 down in that crater, all ruined and useless. I'm going to leave it there, um, if I can't figure out how to fix it, because I think it's a very cool little thing just to have... Um, have around, just kind of a monument to my failure. Um, or I might bring a, a grapple hook along and just move it to Kerbin. Um, I'm not sure. I might do something cool with it. Anyway, the Keythane Manor is safe, and this base is probably going to be fine now. Um, so yeah, I will be sending a couple of vehicles, as I've said. I could probably send them both at once on the SLS, because it's such a heavy lifter. Um, weird blip there. Anyway, uh, it's time for um, time for this to cut, uh, this to make its little maneuver. Well, it's not quite time. It's four days from then. But I don't have anything to do in those four days. Um, and I've been checking the debug a lot. You can see every now and again, it's like, oh, I'll check the debug because I I don't know. My it's just running so terribly. I don't know why. Um, I I actually do. I think I blame B nine. B nine makes my game run terribly. Uh. But anyway, it's time to just kind of deorbit, I guess. Um, and this is just testing very fast re-entry, um, kind of like Orion, I guess, but from a much higher, you know, much higher orbit. And because I need to know that this can, you know, come back safely, because um, if Kerbal's can't just be dying, seriously, why does this keep blacking out? Um, okay. Oh, thanks, Vegas. Okay. Um, okay, just another blackout there from Sony Vegas. That was very annoying. It does does do that a lot. But anyway, it's time for a launch of uh, my space launch system, um, which is a reusable, my kind of reusable version of the space launch system. This, the actual space launch system, of course, will not be reusable because, well, it was never designed for that, and, you know, reusability is probably not even possible. I say probably not. It's, well, it's, it's SpaceX have made some good stuff about it, but it's very difficult. And government enterprises aren't actually good at, aren't great at innovation. They're good at doing... A lot of cool things, and I think the space launch system is very, very important. Anyway, um, I've dropped those boosters, of course. They kind of smashed into each other, so that's not going to be reused. But you can see these giant um, these giant air brakes at the top of this rocket. I was using small ones last episode, and those just weren't providing the drag. And these are the same mass 
as the smaller air brakes, so I will be using them to try and slow myself down because Ferrum Aero Space, Space does not like these um, NASA parts and they just never slow down in the, uh, in the atmosphere. So yeah, anyway, this is taking a very important bit of kit to orbit. This is taking about a 50 ton payload, which is my drive section. Oh, and you can see all these bits of debris flying past. That um, Moho Explorer came really close to me. And there's some Duna Explorer um, debris that come past just there, yeah, Duna Explorer. Um, stuff keeps almost hitting me in this orbit because I use this orbit so much. Um, but yeah, this is the drive section and Keythane Miner for the Duna kind of ground base. Um, if you remember from a couple of episodes ago, I... Um, I mismade the. Uh, I accidentally took out a very vital docking port from the uh, Duna base. So this is kind of my mock-up. It is using infernal. My kind of mock-up fix is what I meant to say. It's using infernal robotics to um, to have some you know movable engines and because this will be expendable um, basically the, all the transfer stage. That'll just slam into Duna. Um, whereas my other transfer stages will hopefully be reused for things um, and just used for moving stuff around Duna. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'm just getting my intercept with the rest of the spacecraft, um, and I'm just going to throw this together. As I have said many a time, there will be three spacecrafts heading out to Duna. Um, the Duna Orbital Base Kit, which is going to be like a station, some service vehicles, that sort of stuff. Um, the Ground Base Kit, and probably a military spacecraft, because it's a bit of fun, a bit of a BD armory. Um, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe there'll be some more spy satellites, as there have been a couple around uh, Kerbin, and there's a lot of paranoia about... Um, Kerbal Russia starting a space race cold war or something, I don't know. Something stupid. Anyway, I'm running out of RCS, um, as you can kind of see, because um, I didn't bring that much. Oh, I have quite a bit, but I, I, I burned a lot. So I'm still going to use these engines to kind of slow me down and speed me up, because they can be moved around. So they can do, you know, f um, prograde and retrograde burns without having to rotate the whole spacecraft, which is nice. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to get myself an intersect. And this isn't a very nice piece of maneuvering I have to do because this is not actually made for maneuvering. Um, the And there's a lot of infernal robotics. And infernal robotics are horrible to move around because when they're not strutted they flex a lot basically because they're joints. That's kind of what they do. That's their job to move. Um, but yeah I've turned the engines around and will slow myself down a touch um, so that I don't hit the Duna base kit. Although I obviously I kind of staggered my way in just in case this all failed. I want this to fly past it not slam into it. Um, so yeah, I do usually do staggered approaches. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of kind of doing the standard thing. And I usually leave these bits um, t sped up um, just because, well, yeah, because, you know, they're not particularly fun to, you know, watch all of it. Um, but I like to leave them in because I like just everything to kind of be very apparent about what's going on. I did have someone say, why don't you do this in um, live commentary, actually? Uh, and good idea. I mean, I can understand why people, you know, want live commentary stuff, but KSP isn't very live commentary. -y. Like the BD Armory stuff I did, that was that was great for live commentary. That was fun. That was spontaneous. I got a lot of views. A lot of people liked it. But with stuff like this, I mean, if this was this is at four times time accelerator. If I was commentating this like live, the you know the first little bit of jump, the ju the jump I did with the first spacecraft, that took twenty minutes to film. That would be an entire episode of me just kind of moving through space. Okay, actually it was probably that and moving the lab. That's not a very interesting episode because I wouldn't get any of this in. Yeah, and I'm already having to talk about, you know, other people's comments to fill a video that's sped up to four times time accelerate. But yeah, no, I, I like doing this sort of stuff in post-production. It's just, I just quite like, I don't know. I just like this style of doing stuff. That's one of the things I like about KSP. It feels a lot like commentating, um, but anyway. Uh, as I've kind of tried to move that little, uh, the kind of habitation modules and kind of crossbar closer to me, it was very difficult because there's only RCS on one of those um, habitation things and one SAS unit, and it oscillated a lot as you could see, and it was very unstable. And I'm having to maneuver this kind of behemothy, not very well controlled, poorly RCS thing into, yep, all the Sony Vegas bullshit just. Sony Vegas is like, I'm not going to show you the post-production, I bet you're not doing a commentary right now. Which wasn't fantastic, so there's obviously another blip there. I will, uh, I don't know, when I get paid by Machinima, well not paid by Machinima, paid, get my YouTube money. Um, I don't know, I've got a few things to buy, but I'd like to get some, just the newer version of Sony Vegas that doesn't glitch all the time and, you know, renders slightly faster. Um, but anyway, uh, as I was saying, um, 
horrible dockings. Basically, uh, this docking was horrible. It's not very apparent now, and this is all at four times time acceleration. And I, so you can see how slowly I did this because I wasn't gonna mess around and hit one of those. Because if I if I'd hit one of those freaking uh, habitation modules, I'd have no hope of docking. Um, so yeah, uh, that was kind of my process there. I I just very slowly moved in. And now I've got to dock this on the back of the spacecraft because this is going to be dragged by the spacecraft. This is kind of the headquarters of the base. It has the command pod. It you know it can actually move around. It's the bigger one. It's the better one. But it has no RCS because well it's it's a lab. It's a base. It's not really doing anything. And for God's sake, I forgot to take a lab to Duna. Um, no, there's a lab on the um, space station that will be around Duna, isn't there? So that's fine. Um, and I've got ideas for dynamic science packages I can move around. Um, but yeah, so basically I just use my engines to very carefully, not particularly carefully actually, because it's very hard to carefully maneuver with engines, um, just kind of, uh, kind of move into the docking port, avoid that, um, control unit I just decoupled. Um, one day I'm going to send a cleanup mission, <clears throat> just send a shuttle, just put it in the cargo bays. I'm kind of annoyed I can't just use my old shuttles now because the new B9 parts don't coalesce with the old ones. So I can't ever use those shuttles again. So I might have to design a new shuttle. Oh, no, I'm not going to design a new space shuttle. It's an aging vehicle. I have SSTOs now, but still. And I don't need a shuttle because I have the space launch system, which is much better than the space shuttle, in my opinion. Um, well, although the space shuttle was very important for building the space station, of course. Um, although I'm sure there were ways around it. But yeah, I think the space shuttle was very cool. I think the space launch system is very important. And this is the space launch system in, in, in Kerbin, in the little world, with a shrinking docking adapter. You can see that um, every time there's like a decoupler on top of these, it gets smaller. If it's just like a stage, like a sta interstage fairing or a fairing ring. Yeah, it always just seems to shrink in size. Anyway, um, well, when I'm offloaded, because you can see it doesn't really fit there anymore. But anyway, using those air brakes, I want to bring this back, uh, bring this back, as slowly as possible so I don't have to use so much fuel and this was like a proper payload this time it was like 50 tons that I just took to orbit and I do a quick burn um, and then I realize I'm coming in over land I'm gonna land in that desert I don't have any landing legs I didn't put them on for this version I just put on bigger air brakes so yeah gonna come in over land this is my first solid ground land testing um, I don't have any landing legs, so I'm going to land very, very slowly. But I still have a lot of fuel, like way more fuel than I thought I would. After like a 50-ton payload, that's very impressive. Um, but anyway, now I'm around 2 kilometers above the ground. I'm going to slow myself down to about 30 meters per second vertical velocity, which is quite fast. Um, but it, it's controlled, is the point. And I don't want it to be too slow, because then I'd run out of fuel. And that would be very bad. Um, but I've left those, I've kind of locked those... Um, air brakes on just to give me extra, you know, extra drag, slow me down as much as possible. And I am going to try and land this on the engines because, you know, might as well. Um, it's just pretty good to land on the engines and, uh, well, no, it's not good to land on the engines. It's good to land it on land is what I meant to say. It would be nice to land it on landing legs. And my ideal plan is to just land it right back on the launch pad and then just put another thing on top of it one day. It would be very cool imagery if... Just that would be awesome imagery, I think. Um, I don't know what I'd do about the boosters. Um, figure something out for them. Anyway, this is touching down now one meter per second. This is a giant 3.75 meter rocket touching down on its engines on land in the desert after going to space. And that lands stably. I have actually properly reused this stage. So I am very happy about that. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Chaos Booth Tape. I'll see you next time. <laughs>